Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of No DQ and A video right here on youtube.com slash no DQCW. And as always, no DQ.com. I would like to congratulate CM Punk for being the 2012 No DQ.com King of the Ring. Thanks to everyone for voting. Got a lot of questions here, so let's get right down to it. Hey Aaron, love the show. Do you possibly see a stipulation in the Triple H Brock Lesnar SummerSlam match where if Brock wins, then Paul Heyman is the GM? Please answer in video. I definitely see that as a possibility. That seems to be the direction that WWE is going right now. They have this whole um, lawsuit storyline where Paul Heyman is suing WWE, Brock Lesnar is suing WWE, and it could very well lead to where Paul Heyman says he'll drop the charges if they put the stipulation in place where if he wins, he gets full control of WWE. So um, that, that definitely seems to be uh, in the direction that they're heading, but you, ne you never know for sure what's going to happen in WWE. Uh, they could always change their mind and go in a different direction, but I like that whole storyline. I think it, it um, adds a lot of build and intrigue to SummerSlam, so I'm all for it. What are your thoughts on Ken Doan, a.k.a. Kenny Dykstra, tweeting his dirty laundry about John Cena? He says he's not bitter and that he and Cena can get along, but that doesn't seem true when you read his tweets. I think that Kenny Dykstra is just trying to draw attention to himself right now. Now, um, in regards to the John Cena and Randy Orton backstage heat, I mean, from what a lot of people have said, there, there's probably some truth to that. The fact that Randy Orton in his early days uh, had a bad reputation, and John Cena's even said this himself, that um, he didn't get along with Randy Orton too, too well in the early days. So um, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's true to a degree, but um, you got to keep in mind, these guys are professionals, and um, you know they're not going to hold a grudge against each other. They're all in it to try to um, make a living, and... And I'm not even going to begin to go into the stuff with Cena and his wife. I mean, nobody knows what's going on with that. And uh, all that is purely speculation at this point. So, um, yeah, to me, it just comes off like... I mean, he's always come off like he's been been bitter ever since he left WWE. Uh, Kenny Dykstra. And um, I, I just think it's his way of trying to draw attention. And especially with all this divorce news coming out. I mean, the timing of it is uh, quite convenient. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't read too much into it. It's just more the fact of him blowing out steam and just uh, try, trying to get his name out there. If WWE is more concerned with a casual audience, why do they change plans because of spoilers leaking out online where only a, sm a small portion will ever see it? I think it's because WWE tends to overestimate the internet. And um, they, they think that more more of their audience is, is on the internet reading news and uh, reading spoilers when the fact is it's, it really is a small portion of the audience even in this day and age. I mean, uh, going back to the late 90s, I remember like Vince Russo thought that um, everyone was on the internet, which um, wasn't the case. I mean, now I think you could say that most people are on the internet, but I still think that... Um, a lot of WWE fans that tune into Monday Night Raw every week, I mean, they have between 4 and 5 million viewers. I'm estimating that maybe half a million at the most go on a site like WWE.com, and then from that point, maybe you get a few hundred thousand, if that, that, that follow the internet, not just WWE.com, but sites like NoDQ.com, and they, they go on the internet looking for wrestling news. I think that that ends up only being a few hundred thousand people at the most. So, um, and, and the thing with Twitter trends, I mean, it doesn't really mean all that much to trend on Twitter. I mean, we've seen uh, Tyler Rex trending on Twitter, and it, it means absolutely nothing. And WWE acts like, oh my God, we trended on Twitter, and they make such a huge deal out of it when um, it, it really doesn't mean a whole lot. Because uh, if a small group of people are on Twitter and they start tweeting a lot about something, it can trend. I mean, we, we've seen that before with, with very random trends, even Justin Bieber, Bieber trends. Like any time that his fan base comes up with a phrase, they all tweet it a million times and it ends up trending. 
So um, same thing with WWE. I mean, anytime a name is mentioned on Raw, everyone will start talking about it at once and then it'll trend. And it doesn't really mean anything. Why did WWE bury Zack Ryder? It seems like WWE doesn't like anyone that gets big without their push. Well, you hit the nail right on the head with that one. I mean, that that's pretty much exactly why WWE is not not pushing Zack Ryder like we all think that they should. Um, you look at the Long Island Raw this past week. I mean, WWE purposely didn't put him on the show because um, they, they're not pushing him right now. And uh, they don't want to put a guy on TV who is, uh, who is not being pushed. And despite the fact that he's over with the fans, they, they, just, uh, they just didn't want to do that. And, um, yeah, I mean, they, they've actually gone out of their way to uh, try to make Zack Ryder not over with the audience. Like, you look at WrestleMania, having him lose that match, and then the Eve turns on him, and they're, they're doing everything in their power, it seems, to, to break him down, because th he's not the guy that they want to push. I mean, that, that's just the way it is, and uh, I, I don't know why, but, you know, Zack Ryder got over on his own, and I think they're holding a grudge against him for that, and they don't, they don't want to set set a precedent where they start pushing them and then other guys think that they can just do whatever they want to try to get a push. Uh, you got to get a push when WWE feels you deserved it or earned it. And uh, clearly they don't think Ryder has deserved it, which is unfortunate. I mean, you would think that if somebody's catching on with the audience that you, uh, you go all the way with him. Um, but it's a different era. I mean, if this was the late 90s and WWE was struggling against WCW, I think it would be a totally different story. If Zack Ryder had started to get over doing his gimmick, uh, Vince McMahon would have uh, just taken the ball and ran with it. But, like I said, it's a different era. Do you think Robert Roode will be championed by Bound for Glory? Do you see a new champion heading into Bound for Glory? Well, I know that the, the current plan in TNA is for Bobby Roode to go all the way to Bound for Glory and uh, face James Storm once again in, in all likelihood. What makes sense would be for uh, James Storm to finally win the title. He failed it, locked down, and took some time off, and now he's making the big comeback, and he'll probably end up winning the Bound for Glory series. So, I mean, that that's the predictable route, but, I mean, that's the logical route, and TNA's really trying to uh, change their ways in terms of um, doing long-term long storylines and... Uh, stick into a long story and and then that's what the story tells for Bobby Roode to to uh, or excuse me James Storm to make his comeback and uh, win the title from Roode. Now of course somebody might decide that it is too predictable and uh, they'll change plans again but if it was me I would just stick with the plan and go with it and tell the story and um, see what happens. I mean they that's something I really think they need to do is uh, focus on long-term long planning, even if it's predictable to some people. Just go with it. The, the key is to tell a good story. So that's what I think they should do. How badly will Sting and Kurt Angle's eventual retirement hurt TNA as both have been so in instrumental in building the TNA product for years now? I think that um, Kurt Angle being gone will do more to hurt TNA just because when you look at TNA's pay-per-views in recent years, I mean, Kurt Angle more times than not has been in the in one of the best matches of the night, if not the best match. So um, he, he's been a very important part to TNA. In my opinion, the most important guy that TNA ever signed, more than Sting. But, um, I mean, Sting has done a lot for TNA, but let's face it, he's, uh, he's getting up there and... Um, his matches haven't necessarily, uh, it ha they haven't lit the world on fire, let's just put it that way. I mean, they've been okay, but if, if Sting disappeared, I think TNA would do just fine. And um, I think they really need to start focusing on their own talent and not relying so much on uh, guys from WWE in the past and WCW. And they really need to, to start pushing their own guys more and uh, I think you need to have less pay-per-views where Sting's in a main event match. I mean, if you're going to keep them around, uh, keep them as a special attraction, maybe third match from the top or whatever, but don't put them in the main events anymore. That's just my opinion. Why is WWE the top wrestling slash sports entertainment company in the world when 95% of the people on the internet hate the stuff they are putting out every week? Um, going back to earlier with that other question about um, the internet fans and... Uh, and WWE. 
the fact is, um, number one, a lot of these fans that are on the internet, they, they do make up a small portion of the overall audience. And um, as far as them hating the stuff, I mean, they are the most hardcore of hardcore fans. So um, they, they've been with WWE through thick and thin, and uh, they are very critical of the product. I mean, you look, it, this goes way back to like ECW. ECW, um, that fan base consisted of uh, the most diehard wrestling fans. And um, they like what they like, and they're, they're very critical, and they know when the big companies are trying to manipulate them and uh, force them to like something that they don't want to like. So uh, that, that's, why, that's one reason why they, they uh, hate so much. And, um, you know, I hate to say it, but Internet fans just tend to want to complain about anything. I mean, that's the way they are. Um, some of it, I, I, uh, I feel, is, is justified, some of their complaints. But some of them, it's just them just being negative. And I tell them, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Because WWE is going to do what they're going to do. And they're a business. They're trying to make money. And um, then nothing's going to stay the same. The Attitude Era is gone. It's not coming back. Um, things change. And I, I try to tell that to people. And um, I still enjoy WWE. I've always enjoyed it. Going back to a kid, regardless of whether it was um, PG or, you know, TV-14. It, it's always been captivating to me. And I've liked it. No matter what, no matter what, as long as it tells a good story, you have interesting characters, you have interesting storylines, you have good matches. I mean, that that's good enough for me. But it depends on the person. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and A video. Make sure you subscribe, youtube.com slash no DQCW. Spread the word on Facebook or Twitter. And uh, I'll see you next week for more No DQ and A video.